I just like to speak on behalf of a specific demographic um, that I have never mentioned a lot in the room, especially young black men in our community. I really want Hamilton police to understand that this is not an issue about them versus us. This is our issue of community safety. Our young black men in the community have become so afraid of police because of the interactions that even when there is valuable information to help the police keep our community safe, they cannot go up to them simply because they already perceive themselves as suspects before even interacting with any police officer based on what they witness with their friends. And I also want to say thank you. And I also want to make it very, very clear that our community will keep getting much more dangerous if we go down this line. It is time that we face the facts and we work with our community members to find tangible solutions through dialogue and communication and a relationship of trust, rather than trying to use tactics that will coerce people into getting information out of them, especially with young people who are the worst or most vulnerable to these kind of tactics. Thank you. Uh, hi, uh, my name is Michael. I think that uh, any stop should have a reason. You should not be able to stop anybody without a reason. And I also just want to say quickly, Bill C-51, I'm afraid of what the police force is going to rationalize, that what they can do to protect the good of us. Uh, under that, Bill, and the minister, I must uh, require you to not take consultation to make regulations. This must end now, sir. And I would ask the city and the councillors who are here and those who aren't to uh, find a path to legally fight the province uh, under the uh, charter and the uh, human rights code and any other code and charter that we can find to fight this. the first 
which led to the building of the residential school system as First Nations people were to be not exist today, but they do. Council Green posted last night on Facebook saying that this could be the second movement of civil rights. So I would like to talk about what actually happened during the 1960s when the huge civil rights moved uh, in the states. We know that JFK, his brother Bobby, and Martin Luther King were all assassinated, and they were the three strongest faces in that movement. There was federal law, individual states did not apply the law. The head of the FBI, J. Edgar Hoover, saw all those movements of Martin Luther King as communists and agitators. So I asked if all those police officers, government people were not held accountable for what happened back then, how do we expect for it to uh, take place today? Because it's gotten worse. So as an individual, I'm seeing many things that really make me upset. And I understand that while we want public safety, I want to see the Elliot Ness kind of people that stand up for the rights of the people. Because if you don't hold those at the top under the same set of laws and rules that we are held to, then we're going nowhere. Thank you. Hi there. Oh, okay. Here we are again. You know what? It's not just the young people that are getting really tired. What about the old people? <laughs> oh my goodness. Here we go again. In the 60s, it was like, okay, if we get together, and we state the fact, and we state our rights, how do we deal with it? Well, heaven's sake, here we are. Um, 65 years later, and here we are again, trying to get some of these people that are what? They get a great amount of money, a great amount of respect, are respected for their intelligence and their ability to make decisions, waffling again. No decision. Another excuse. So, to join with our um, fellow brothers and sisters to bring us all to get to Washington. I hope to God we don't have to do that. Come on. This is Canada. We do have a civil way of doing things. But you know what? We put our foot down when we really mean it. Yeah. Next yeah. time, I'd like to say to all of you that are responsible for upholding the laws that have been written, passed, and signed to give a second thought to the fact that right now you are circumventing the Charter of Rights and we are definitely growing impatient. So you better get your act together soon because you know what? We'll be back. <laughs>
you want to live in peace there. But you have never noticed that you have to call yourself a holy for as to where our people. We never have to use our God or use that law for it. So maybe it is the system that really needs to be corrected. Yeah. And we can follow the system. We really need to use that law for it. So even in the word, a holy for it, maybe it should be considered to be changed. Because when you say for it, that is a big risk and it puts the intimidation into your people that way. You know, so a lot of things can be changed. And the balance is an issue of calling me. Right? You know, what's going on? Yeah, that And I'm highly offended because not only am I Aboriginal, but I've been trying to do my best to live my life in a good way, staying out of trouble, doing outreach in the community, and trying to be there for anybody that needs it at all times, even like four o'clock in the morning. And carding actually almost cost me my life because I was at one point in prison for protecting my children against the pedophile, which as far as I know is still a crime, right? And that was seven years ago. That was yesterday. That wasn't three years ago. And I'm still being harassed. And I don't need to be shot and killed because some jerk wants to kill my information to use against me. I already have a size card that put the crosshairs right above my head already. So I'd like to see it stop, please, because it's really not fair, especially if people aren't doing anything. So before you start coming up to my people, you need to find out a better way of uh, dealing with us and walking up and judging us is not the way. We invited everybody here as guests. We've only done what we can to back everyone and be kind to you. Please remember that we're still here. And when you come, Mr. De Care or Don't Care, whatever, when you come to our school and sisters, um, things that we have, we really don't want anybody there that's not going to help. If you're coming with empty words and empty promises, you might as well leave at the door, because we've heard it before. And we're kind of sick of it. So, honestly, know your place. Thank you. 